Hi, Ian. How are you doing today? Doing very well, Gilbert. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, great to see you again. And it's been a while for some time since we last met. Maybe you can just uh, give us uh, a bit of an overview about uh, CMX Gold, uh, Silver and Gold. You bet. Um, well, uh, as you know, Silver uh, is a is a pet uh, a pet project of mine, and and that's what attracted us to this property uh, that we have in Idaho. And and so the company itself uh, is um, is well organized. We've been around for about ten years, um, and uh, and uh, but we've been sort of riding out the commodities uh, cycle and um, and uh, the company itself uh, uh, is focused on the Clayton Silver mine, uh, which is an oil producing mine in uh, Idaho. Uh, and, and now we're uh, really well positioned to uh, to start to move it forward. So what will be the strategic reason why you operated out of from Idaho for that uh, project over there? Any specific reason why you choose to work there? I mean, I think uh, the, the the first thing is that that property, uh, you know, we were attracted to the property. We were attracted to the property because it was a former producing mine. Uh, it was never mined out. So so we're not a company that is looking to find lower grade um, leftovers from a big mining company. Um, I, 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 I thought that this property had tremendous uh, untapped potential. Uh, it hadn't been explored very much. It's in a very good state. Uh, the state of Idaho is is mining friendly. Uh, the area that we're in in South Central Idaho is uh, is an area that really supports um, mining. It's a, it was a much larger mining district in in days gone by, but it still has uh, has some mines. Uh, it, the the county itself and the state are really interested in promoting mine development. So 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 that's a great asset. Um, in, in a good state, in a good area, very accessible. We have roads into the property, uh, paved road right to the property. We have power not far away, highways. You know, we can move equipment in good infrastructure. Uh, and um, we also, uh, you know, feel that uh, that we can move relatively quickly. We, this property didn't have any environmental issues around it. You know, the water coming out of the old mine is is, is clean. And, and and so that's that's an important aspect as well. So it had all the pieces uh, that one would want. So very happy that that asset was there in Idaho and it's a good place to do business. Great to hear. So of the, recently I saw you have a pretty interesting news coming out to talk about your asset results. I think this is some of the, a lot of shareholders or investors have been waiting for quite a bit. So maybe you could share some of the highlights with us. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, there, there, there are two aspects, and I've already touched on the fact that this property has not been uh, really explored very much uh, over the years in the past operators. Uh, it was what we call a mom and pop operation. It was a relatively small operation, and uh, mostly that mine operated from the 1930s to the to the to the mid 1980s. Shut down in the mid 1980s when metal prices were falling and costs were up, and 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 uh, so it, so it wasn't economic. I think. The, the owner that we we acquired uh, uh, the property from intended to get going again, but you know things just didn't didn't happen. So, so um, and on the property uh, there's a stockpile, what we call a stockpile of material of rock that is was considered slightly lower grade, lower grade, not uh, high enough to go through the mill with the technology they had at that time. And what was significant about that was that it's probably at least a million tons. It could be more. And we did work on that stockpile uh, a number of years ago to, to try and assess what's in it. So this is not to be confused with tailings. So tailings are when you've put the product through the mill and it's and the tailings are the leftover. This was material that was never put through the mill. Uh, and we had a really pleasant surprise. We did a comprehensive assay, uh, uh, assaying uh, project on it. And we took 3,000 kilograms of material, quite a bit, 16 locations. We wanted to be very representative of what's there. And we, we ended up with a great surprise because we had silver, lead, zinc, but we also had some gold. And so with all of that, we said, oh, my gosh, you know, we got like over a million tons. We've got uh, uh, values uh, for these metals that, you know, are over $80 a ton. Um, how do we extract that? How could we extract it? 
And uh, last year, we finally uh, zeroed in on ore sorting technology, which has really come to the fore in the mining business. And so we we partnered up with a group out of Surrey, BC, uh, ABH Engineering and their their uh, company, Sulfide Remediation Inc. And what they do is they um, bring in ore sorting uh, systems that uh, that will are able to high grade the rock. So this is sort of unlocked uh, for us the potential. And all we needed to do was to have it confirmed uh, that our our uh, stockpile was 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 going to uh, to uh, work well for this ore sorting. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, it did, it did take longer. It, it was supposed to take six months. We had they had to ship it to Australia. Tomra is the Norwegian company that has the ore sorting. Their their system is in our, you know their lab and everything is in Australia. So they have the whole system set up there. Um, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a test to say does this ore sorting work. It was a test to confirm that it works well on our stockpile. And we got those results, uh, you know, f- uh, announced them a few weeks ago. Um, very significant. We had um, good grades for the silver, lead, and zinc. Um, and uh, we, what happens is when you put it through the ore sorting system, you crush it, you 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 get a ten percent product, and that's very important because then we can move that product uh, by truck to uh, to another toll to a mill that somebody else has. And it worked very well. We were able to increase the grade by about seven times. And we think once we have that system operating on site, we can even do better than that. You know, we can sort of tweak it and do better. So what that means is we we now have a technology and a system that will enable us to get cash flow out of this stockpile and quite meaningful cash flow. I mean, there, there really aren't, uh, there really aren't any, um, any, um, junior mining companies that that I've been able to see that have this kind of opportunity. So the stockpile is is shorter term. So we're expecting to have the system in there by the middle of next year. And uh, um, our joint venture with the ore sorting engineers is that we'll get half the profit, but they have to fund the system. Uh, and the system's about, it could be up to uh, 15 million Canadian. Um, and, uh, and it's, you know, the actual ore sorting itself is manufactured in Germany. So, so that's uh, that's really significant, and not only does it show that the stockpile uh, is going to create some cash flow for us, but the other thing is that it sort of says, well, if this was the low grade stuff, man, what what else is in there is still underground? And one of the things that we do know from our work on the property and on the historical records is that there is still um, uh, part of the North Shore body that that they that is underground that they never took out. So now we're thinking once we do the stockpile, why can't we just pull out high grade stuff out of the mine and make it super high grade? So it's going to really accelerate the advancement of the company. So uh, so th- these uh, and these results um, are impressive. So that uh, I mean, we, we thought that would work well. And we know, too, that with the gold, the gold is relatively low, 0.8 of a gram from our work that was done, that when there is gold in the material that's put through the ore sorting system, that that uh, we will capture most of that gold. So, so we've got the lead zinc silver as a base, and then we know we're going to capture some gold from the stockpile. Um, and as I mentioned, over a million tons in our estimate, it could be even more. So, so very significant uh, uh, development for us. So you have some ghost showing, but you're predominantly uh, silver project also too. So what do you think if uh, silver will come back for a, a bit of a rally? Uh, and, uh, and the next bull run here. Well, I've been studying the silver market for for a long time, over ten years, and um, it has it, it's 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 starting to uh, to uh, move up. Um, silver, unfortunately, gets manipulated in the COMEX by the uh, futures market. It is it is the uh, it is it is the commodity in the world that has the the biggest multiple of paper trading against it. But what that has meant is that the silver price has been suppressed for, you know, probably at least 10 years and there's a shortage developing. So, so we see the fundamentals will eventually overwhelm whatever financial trading goes on uh, because they need silver for electronics and uh, of particular note is for solar panels. So the next generation of solar panels that are just coming out is going to require twice as much silver. And some people have studied it and they're saying, well, 10, 15 years from now, if they're building the, the, the number of solar panels in the world that they're saying they're going to to get to net zero by 2050, 
that's a whole other discussion. Um, there won't be, they'll be using 100% of annual silver production. So this is the this is the the very bullish underpinnings to the silver market is that uh, silver is primarily a byproduct of other mining, and only it's like seventy percent probably, and only thirty percent uh, it comes from silver mines or predominantly silver mines. So there's no easy way to dramatically in increase the uh, production of silver. And the other thing is that silver, when it's used in electronics and solar panels and EV vehicles, use more silver too. Um, jewelry still is there and then and then investment um but there's there's no ability to recycle it so so 70 percent of silver that's produced every year is actually consumed and gone so that that is very bullish so to your to your question there uh gilbert the you know we're, we're talking about some pretty big cash flow coming from the stockpile and then and then moving into dewatering the mine and pulling stuff out of the mine um and and we can do that without having to build a mill. That's pretty significant. If if the silver price is double, uh, which I think is 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 what's going to happen when it finally starts to move on its next run over here in the next couple of years, obviously that will that will uh, be even better for us. Um, uh, and I think I'm, I'm very bullish on commodities generally because there hasn't been investment in it across the whole commodity space. And and uh, where are the where are the metals going to come from for the green? you know, the green economy, they, you know, they, they, we have to dig them out of the ground. So that's going to require a lot of capital. And so, and so that's very bullish on a bigger picture. We want to go into the, uh, 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 we want to start drilling the property because we think that there's, you know, so much more that hasn't been tested there. We know that the South or body wasn't mined out. We know there's stuff left over in the North or body. And so, with this cash flow coming from the uh, ore sorting of the stockpile, without having to dilute our shareholders, we can go out and uh, start drilling up the property. I mean, we feel from from the records, and we think there were record you know records weren't kept in the early days. Probably a half a billion dollars at today's prices came out of this mine and were sold, silver, lead, zinc mostly, uh, and we think that we can prove up multiples of that through diamond drilling. So. So that seems like exciting times ahead for investors to follow CMX Gold and Silver there. So I think we're running out of time here today, but thank you for really sharing your uh, story with us, Cyan. Yeah, you bet. And uh, one of the things I might just leave you with is that uh, uh, the management of the company, um, uh, you know, our group, we own over 60%. And with major shareholders that you know that that have supported us, it probably takes up to seventy five percent of the outstanding stock. So, so uh, we're we're definitely uh, invested uh, in in the opportunity and uh, and excited to uh, you know to create value for ourselves and our shareholders. So it's a real win win coming up for CMX in the next couple of years. Right, we call it uh, having the skin in the game uh, as we have investors should look for in terms of uh, the junior market. So again, thank you for your time uh, again today. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Gilbert.